So you're getting these envelopes, right? I decided it'd be good to have a little spectacle. So, but it, it might be surprisingly less spectacle. Um, so actually, when you get your envelope, if you could just hold it up in the air, I just want to make sure everyone has one. If you don't have an envelope yet, can you raise your hand? OK, so these people right here need envelopes, and we're almost ready. And I'd like to say, before, before we begin this, this sort of experimental phase, that this may be the shortest TED Talk ever. <laughs> so we're going to see how this plays out. So does everyone have an envelope? Yes. OK, great. Um, if you have glasses, you're going to want to take them off now. And you can open your envelope. It's really not that exciting, but just you know, bear with the, the suspense here. Um, these are blindfolds. And I'd like you all to put your blindfolds on now so that we can begin the talk. As you'll see, it's a bit of a trust exercise. I am also wearing a blindfold and suddenly very self-conscious of how I look. And you may be sitting there thinking about how you look or thinking about what it means to not be able to see. But what I sense is that the, the feeling, the energy in the room completely radically shifted just then. With the exception of the periphery where people are not wearing blindfolds because they're running cameras and working and we just, we forgive them, right? I was invited here today in part, I believe, to speak about a, um, an ongoing performance that I, uh, it's a performance, it's also a project, I don't really know what to call it, but it's called Occupy Man. And it was inspired by going to the, um, the protests happening in Zuccotti Park in October of 2011. And I started thinking about money, and I started thinking about my money as an artist. And I've been a full-time artist for a couple of years now, and oftentimes I'm barely surviving. And I, I thought a lot about what that meant to me and why I was committing my life um, to barely surviving and not feeling like a victim, feeling like this is a choice that I made. I had a career, a former career as a, a web technologist and marketer in many different types of companies, different types of startups. But when I um, was laid off from a job in 2008 during the financial crisis, I, I left New York and I went traveling around the world. I went to South America and Asia and um, it was sort of my late 20s version of a, a walkabout. And when I returned, there were still very few jobs in, in that particular market that I was in. And so I decided that I would try and make it as an artist. And um, I should say in 2010, I participated in the, in the hashtag class, which was the exhibition that Jen Dalton had referred to earlier. And I should say participated, I kind of weaseled my way in because they, it was an open call. And, um, and one of the exercises that I did in one of the panels was to write out my expenses on the chalkboard, what my rent was, how much money I make, what my general income is. And what I found is that people were terrified when they saw that number, A, because of how low I'm able to keep my expenses, but B, that I was able to share that information. And flash forward to the protests on uh, Wall Street and thinking again about money and where my money comes from, how I earn it, where I spend it. And so very early on, I realized that if I was going to be protesting, if I was going to be out there you know, holding a sign and, uh, and linking arms and potentially getting arrested, that I needed to look at my own personal relationship to money. And um, I started this project called Occupy Man, I believe sometime around the beginning of October, I think October 11th. And at the time, I had $76 in my checking account. And I had no idea when any money was coming in. And that's a very scary place to be. Um, and so I just, I had had the idea and I just put it out there. And I published this document, which is a, a, a Google document for anyone to see. And what I realized really quickly is that people were really interested in where I was spending my money and where it was coming from. And in conjunction with the Google document, there's a Twitter account. So every time that there is um, uh, a payment that is made, every time I make money, it gets tweeted. 
And um, including, you know, there's an interesting dilemma um, that I have in giving this talk. Because I will say that I came up here with the, the basic idea that I would mention this Occupy Man project and that you'd all be blindfolded. But nothing else was scripted or thought about. Because I want to be true to this idea, <laughs> the idea that ideas exist in real time. I didn't want to come up here with, um, you know, a bunch of slides, although I did have the joke to be like, you know, you're all blindfolded and say, next slide, please. <laughs> next slide. Next slide. And just continue that. And, and part of it was this idea of thinking through all the things that you can say, right? And so to go back to this idea of just sharing about my, my income and my finances, and people were really interested in... Um, and where, and where I spend my money, and what I found through this process of sharing it publicly, um, is that I'm, a, I'm hyper aware of, of where my money is coming from and how I'm spending it. And to the point where, you know, when, when I was told that there's no compensation for the speakers here, it was a moment of sort of like, well, how does that get, you know, what do I, how do I feel about that? How much time will I spend preparing this? Where is my, you know, where is the idea of the artist as a worker. How does that get played out, right? And so there are these sort of um, very mixed feelings about being here as sort of a spectacle, being here as an artist, as a performance artist, and then how, and to get to the core of the, the actual day-to-day, um, -day, how it's valued, right? And so I don't want to value it any more or any less than anything else. And I think if there's any sort of kind of overarching point in my practice as, a, as an artist and even as a human being, is to try not to value things more than anything else, right? Because I found in, um, in simply just tweeting out that I, I spent $4 on two energy drinks, it's really embarrassing when you buy energy drinks every day because <laughs> people see that and they follow this account. And, um, but it's also very liberating. And so through this kind of sharing um, and through this kind of transparent action, there's a liberation. And ironically, we're all here blindfolded. And part of it is because it allows me to see each of you better as individuals. We're all in this same space right now. And we're all sitting here together. So even though that I'm on stage, you're in the audience, I'm just as, as unable to see as you are. And if I can continue to remember that in my practice as an artist, to continue to sort of search and be willing to stand up here essentially naked with no kind of game plan for here's my big talk, then I have a chance to essentially expand my consciousness. Um, and I think before I just ramble on for much longer, I'm pretty sure that those are the, the points I wanted to make. Um, and I want to thank you all for being here. And um, yeah, let's take our blindfolds off and go to a party. Thanks. Mm -hmm.